Sound the drums were off to war. Gird yourself with sword and shield. In this fight we will stand firm, we will not yield. Marching through the battlefield, the sun is blazing in the blood red sky. Fear not the oncoming war, raise your banners high. We will fight, we will win, though our hope grows dark and dim. Sound the trumpet, beat the drums, like a flint we turn our face towards what's to come. A lot of lords leads us towards battle, the king of kings vanquishes shadows. He is a captain, he is a lord, leading the armies, yielding the word, swords of righteousness in hand. With one voice we will stand. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. the sands of time quiver not and fear believe god is on our side we will fight we will win let the battle now begin laugh and charge the enemy for we know the sands and their defeat our lord our lord leads us towards battle the king of king vanquishes shadows he is our captain he is our Lord, leading the armies, yielding the word, swords of righteousness in hand. With one voice we will stand. Ho, 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 ho. Look above, heaven opens on a white horse, he descends. Eyes of fire crowned with many crowns. See the forces of evil tremble as Satan is bound. The great serpent has been vanquished. We are victorious. Our Lord of Lords has won the battle. The King of Kings vanquished the shadows. He is our captain, he is our Lord, leading the armies, yielding the word. Lift your voices to the sky. Praise the Lord, he reigns on high. Ho, 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 ho. Praise our God, all ye servants, great and small. Praise our God, the omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad, give all honor unto him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his bride hath made herself ready. Hello, everybody. Greetings. Let's uh, open our, before we open, let's say a prayer. Father God, thank you for your word, which is a sword in our mouths and in our hands. And thank you that this word will go forth and bring victory and help us to walk in your path, Lord, and do as you would have us do. Help us to walk uprightly, do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. And let this word be a seed in our heart that grows and bears much fruit. And I thank you for setting a watch before my mouth and keeping the door on my lips. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Life is a battle. In fact, we have been fighting this war for over close to 6,000 years. And yet, our enemy is not a physical person. Our enemy is Satan. And when we are constantly facing him, we have a choice of how we react to the enemy. Do we whine and do we complain when we face all these struggles, these hardships and trials? Or do we throw up our hands and give up? Before we see how we should handle all these battles that we're coming up against, let's look at how we shouldn't handle it. In Numbers 11, in the Amplified Version, we talk about the Israelites who are in the desert. God has just brought them forth with his mighty right hand. He split the Red Sea. He destroyed the Egyptian army. He vanquished their foes. And the people, they grumbled and they deplored their hardships. 
which was evil in the ears of the Lord. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and devoured those in the outlying parts of the camp. The people cried to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire subsided. He called the name of the place Taborah, which means burning, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. And the mixed multitude among them, the rabble who followed Israel from Egypt, began to lust greatly for familiar and dainty food. And the Israelites wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish we ate freely in Egypt and without cost, the cucumbers, the melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now our soul is dried up. There is nothing at all in the way of food to be seen but this manna. And God told Moses, Say to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow you shall eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You will not eat one day, or two, or five, or ten, or twenty days, but a whole month, until you are satiated and vomited up, and it comes up out of your nostrils and is disgusting to you, because you have rejected and despised the Lord, who is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why did we come out of Egypt? And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall, so they flew low beside the camp. About a day's journey on this side, and on the other side, all around the camp, about two cubits above the ground. And the people rose all that day, and all night, and all the next day, and caught and gathered the quails. He who gathered least gathered ten homers, and then spread them out for themselves around the camp to cure them. By drying, while the meat was yet between their teeth, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote them with a very great plague. That place was called Kibroth Hatava, the graze of sensuous desire, because there they buried the people who lusted, whose physical appetite caused them to sin. Here we can read how the Israelites handled their hardships that they were coming up against. They whined and complained, and not only did they do that, they wanted to go back to Egypt, which signifies the old ways, the flesh, the things they had before God brought them out and freed them from the bondage of slavery. How many of us, we whine and we complain, and instead of thanking God for the good things, we remember the good things we used to have back in the old days. But God, he gets angry with that, and that is not how we fight the enemy. We don't give in to his devices. We don't whine and complain and say, well, I want to go back because God clearly can't take care of me, when he can take care of you. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, we should, in our hardships and everything we face, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, give thanks in everything, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Instead of whining and complaining, the Israelites should have rejoiced in how much God had already set them free and then thanked God for providing how much he'd already given and asking him to give more and thanking him for that. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So first of all, in our everyday battles, let's make sure we're not whining and complaining. We won't get victory that way. Instead, we need to give thanks. So, for instance, we lived in a little dome, and it was leaky and moldy, and we had even a mushroom this big at one time growing out of the wall. In the bathroom, we even had a plastic sheet covering the wall because it was coming in decaying and black and ugly. And now, we had tried to fix it, we had tried to replace the ceiling, and it just kept on leaking because it was a dome. And it, at one point, it had even fallen in on our dining room table. There we were, and in the natural, it was leaking, there was black mold, and there was a lot of air circulation in the house. And my mom and I would make a joke and say, oh, God opened another hole so we won't get sick. And we never did get sick. So we could have whined and complained and said, oh, God, you don't take care of us. Why in the world don't you help us get this fixed? Instead, 
we said, oh, thank God, we actually have a roof over our head. And then we joined hands and we all prayed together. And we said, Lord, we thank you for a new roof. And by the way, we thank you for new insulation, new windows, new doors, and thank you for helping us just fix the whole thing. And so we just kept on thanking him and asking him and rejoicing in our circumstances because we were not starving. The Bible says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to abound and I know how to be abased. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengtheneth me. And that's what we need to do in our hardships. Instead of looking like the Israelites and saying, oh, why don't I have what I want? Why isn't this happening for me? Why don't you care for me, Jesus? Instead, we're saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, I'm alive. Thank you, Lord, that I have an eternal hope of heaven with you. And Lord, you know my needs, and I just ask you to provide for this, and I thank you for providing for it. And sure enough, it took two or three years, but God did exceedingly abundantly above all I and my family could ask or think, because we had lost our old house to the bank and a Christian man bought it. He fully renovated from top to bottom, and then he sold it back to us at less than they had valued it at. And so God did more than we could ever ask or think. But in the meantime, we just thanked him. We were patient. We rejoiced in him. And so that's what God wants us to do. So we can learn from the Israelites how not to handle the trials and the battles in our lives. Hebrews 3, verses 7 to 19 reads, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers, they tempted me, proved me, and they saw my works for forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they will not enter into my rest. So take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Remember, they wanted to go to back to Egypt and all their old ways. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the very end. For some, when they heard, they did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved for forty years? Was it not with them that sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we can see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. When we don't rejoice in the Lord, when we're not thanking him, that is unbelief. And if you think that we can get away with whining and complaining and having that constant source of unbelief in our life, and it will turn out well for us, that is not the truth. It makes it very clearly that for the Israelites, because they refused to mix the word with faith, as we'll read, they died in the desert without grasping and actually receiving God's promises for their lives. And I've seen this in so many people's lives that they've failed to receive God's promises in their own life because of unbelief. Hebrews 4 verses 1 to 2 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, the Israelites. But the word preached did not profit them, being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So when confronted with the battle to take the promised land, the Israelites refuse to believe in God. We are confronted with the battle to enter into heaven, to grasp hold of God's promises, and we can choose to believe in God or to be like the Israelites when they said, oh, the whole, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? Why has God brought us into this land? To fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Once again, they wanted to go back to their old ways. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. And then Moses and Aaron, they fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua 
Joshua and Caleb, which were of them that searched the land, they rent their clothes, and they spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through, it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And then God told them, because of your unbelief, because of that, that wickedness in your hearts, you will not receive your promise. And again, in our own lives, how many of us, because of unbelief, are missing out on God's promise? He said he would heal us. He said he would give us victory over sin. He said that he would lead us and guide us continually. And you know, those people in unbelief around us, they speak very strongly. And if we are in unbelief, well, what did the Israelites do when people told them, you can defeat the enemy. You can achieve God's promises. He split the Red Sea. He already made a way for you, and he'll do it again. They wanted to kill them. How many times do we face or do we ourselves get angry when people tell us, well, God said he'll do it, so you need to cling to that promise. And then we get angry at them. Or somebody gets angry at us for clinging to God's promises. But we need to ignore that. Go back to the word of God and do what it says. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of Christ Jesus concerning in you. The Bible talks about how when we face those trials in life, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So lay aside your fears. Take up your praising. Take up your song of worship. And and rejoice in the Lord always, like it says in Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Don't be careful for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And again, thou shalt rejoice before in every good thing that the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among them. Deuteronomy 26, verse 11. Then Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. God has promised us that he has won the battle, and he has made a way for us to enter into heaven. And so we are to rejoice always, no matter what we're going through. I know I struggle a lot to rejoice, it takes faith when nothing looks right. It takes faith to believe that God is going to fulfill his word. I remember talking to God one day and saying, Lord, where do I place my hope? The world is so dark and things, they can seem wonderful for a moment. And then all of a sudden, bang, there comes that devil. There comes that enemy again. And he comes for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Even though God says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. So how can I rejoice in the Lord when everything looks impossible and bleak? Again, Lord, where do I place my hope? Where do I place my dreams? Sometimes I get so depressed Trying to figure out if life's worth it Where do I put my hope? Where do I place my dreams? Is there really anything in this world that has meaning? Oh, oh, oh That's when I read your word and it tells me Nothing in this world can satisfy Everything the devil offers is a lie And you're the only one who can fill me in the Side, and you tell me my hope is in heaven my hope is in you Jesus and my dream is forever 
Spending eternity with you and it's worth my while To fight through the tears and struggles For the day I see your smile and hear you say well done My good and faithful child My hope is in heaven Oh, my hope is in heaven why do people gather riches when their life is merely a breath? Why do they place their hopes? Why do they lay their dreams in these momentary things and choose hell for eternity? But as for me, my hope is in heaven, my hope is in you, Jesus, and my dream is forever, spending eternity with you, and it's worth my while to fight through the tears and struggles, for the day I see you smile and hear you say, well done, my good and faithful child, my hope is in heaven, whoa. Oh, my hope is in heaven, cause who do I have and besides you, Jesus? My dreams, my desires, nothing compares to you, Jesus, cause you're the way, the light, and the truth. So I remind myself, no matter what I'm facing or what I'm going through, my hope is in heaven, my hope is in you, Jesus. And my dream is forever Spending eternity with you And it's worth my while To fight through the fears and struggles For the day I see your face And you wipe my tears away And we'll walk the streets of God Hand in hand for eternity My hope is in heaven Whoa, my hope is in heaven Tick tock, tick tock, there goes the clock. Gotta use my time for you before it stops. Cause I've only got one chance, then it's over and then I'll be with you forever. Cause my hope is in heaven. Whoa, my hope is in heaven. Our hope is in heaven, and our hope is in Jesus Christ, and that's why by faith we can rejoice. The Bible says in Matthew 5, verses 11 to 13, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And Luke 10, 19 to 20 says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. We need to remember to rejoice in the Lord and we need to take up our shield of faith when the enemy comes a calling. The Bible says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The devil is constantly out to steal our hope and steal our joy and to tempt us and try to say, hey, don't you want to go back to Egypt? It's better there. No, Egypt is not better. It will consume your soul. You will lose all of eternity by giving in to your fears and giving in to your lust and desires. They exceedingly lusted after the meat of this world. We are not to do that in our battle, in our fight for our souls, because this is a battle, and we need to fight it. And the Israelites, they refused to mix faith with the word of God, and so they died. And if we refuse to mix faith with the word of God that we are to hide in our heart, the enemy will have a heyday with us. He'll kick us to the curb. He'll steal our peace, our joy, our health, our family members. And if we let him, he will steal our lives. Let's turn to 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 to 30. This is an amazing story. Even in the Old Testament, God shows how he comes through for his people. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did for his people in the Old Testament, he will do for us today. But it takes faith in what he says. 
And so we read about the story of Jehoshaphat, who was king of Judah at the time. And remember, the kingdom of Israel was already split, and Judah was just in charge of two tribes, and Israel was, had ten tribes. And it came to pass that after this also, that the children of Moab and Ammon and the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And there came some that told the king, saying, There comes a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazaznan Tamar, which is in, in Gedi. And so Jehoshaphat was faced with an insurmountable enemy just like we can seem to face insurmountable odds, mountains that can't be traversed, problems that we can't seem to conquer. And this was Jehoshaphat's response to this insurmountable enemy that came up against him. Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And so Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation in the house of the Lord. And he said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? And not thou our God, Art thou not our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil comes upon us as the sword, judgment, pestilence, famine, we stand before this house and in your presence and in the name that is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction, you will hear and you will help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou, would let it, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. They were faced with an enemy. And in the face of that enemy, unlike the Israelites earlier that said, Oh, would to God that we had died in Egypt and you left us as slaves in our sin and our misery. They said, Lord, we need your help. You have saved us from the enemies before and you will do it again. So they sought God. They humbled themselves and said, Lord, we can't do this without you, but you, O oh Lord, are able. He made his request, Jehoshaphat did, to the Lord. He made it known unto the God of Israel. He didn't turn to the world to solve his problems. He sought the Lord. And you know what? That pleased God. And this was God's response to him. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, be not dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Right away, Jehoshaphat took what God said to his heart, and he bowed down in worship. Do we do that? Do we see the word of God in his scripture and say, oh, that's promises for me. I will worship God and claim that and say, thank you, Lord, for doing that. When God says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, or by my stripes you are healed. Do we then take those verses and say, thank you, Lord. I worship you. You will do this for me. You have promised that for me. 
That's what Jehoshaphat did, and he didn't even have the promise fulfilled yet. In the natural, all those enemies, insurmountable, like the waves of the ocean and the sands of the sea, were coming up against him. But we will see by his actions that he had faith in God's promises. He considered the Lord to be faithful and true. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing in praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. All of Judah sang and praised the Lord. Remember, we go back to the verse that says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. They raised their hands and they rejoiced in the Lord. How many of us read the word of God, which is him speaking to us, and then we hang our heads low and we sigh and we act like Eeyore. I guess nothing is going to get better. It looks impossible. My family will always hate God. My circumstances will never improve. I'll always be addicted to this. The doctor says I've got this and I've got that and I won't recover. No, stop that. You're not Eeyore and you don't want the fruit of your words. Remember the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Instead, let's take up our shield of faith and be like the people in Judah. They worshiped God. I don't know about you, but in the natural, I wouldn't go out before an army in the face of a great army and start worshiping and praising God unless I had great faith because they believed God would protect them. In the natural, that's crazy. And the world will tell you for trusting in God, you're crazy, but don't listen to the world. If the, I'll tell you, if the people in Jehoshaphat and Judah had gone to the world for their help instead of going to God, the enemy would have destroyed them and then God would have gotten the blame and they would have said, oh, it must have been his will. You know what? If God had wanted to, to save them, he would have saved them. But that is not how it works. They took hold of God's promises. They worshiped him and they obeyed him. And when they came up, they worshiped with psalteries and harps and trumpets before God. And then God worked a miracle on their behalf. It says right here, again, the way we read, that for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. So the enemy turned on each other. They devoured each other. And it says that Judah and them, they looked upon the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And then Judah and Jehoshaphat, they went out there, and they took the spoil of them. And they found an abundance of riches and jewels, and they took three days to bring in all the spoil. It was so much. And afterwards, they again rejoiced before the Lord with psaltery and harps. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for God gave him rest round about. The enemies devoured each other in the face of Judah and Jehoshaphat trusting in God and rejoicing in him. So we need to rejoice in God. And just like he did with them, he will exceedingly abundantly do above all that we could ask or think. But we keep on tying his hands through unbelief in our life. And that's what the Israelites in the desert did. Psalm 78 verse 40 to 41 says, how oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. 
God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to give us life, to give us victory, to give us freedom from sickness, sin, poverty, greed, lust, hopelessness, bitterness, etc., etc. Jesus Christ has paid the cost. He rose again. He conquered the enemy, and he threw him down from heaven. So why are we acting like we are in an impossible war? and that we're doomed to be destroyed? Why are we letting the enemy attack us and tear us down? Why are we letting fear consume us when God has guaranteed that if we love and serve him, we will be in heaven with him for eternity? The Bible says, fear not him which kills the body, but does not destroy the soul. Rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we are to shout, shout for joy. God has already given us the victory. People are failing to seek the Lord, and then God gets blamed when things happen to them. Let me tell you, if you have lost an arm, if you have lost someone, if you have had a horrible thing happen in your life, it was not Jesus' will. The Bible says, the thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it abundantly. But how will we fight that enemy if we don't know that we are fighting an enemy? And how will we even fight that enemy if we don't realize why we are losing and fought constantly, die, constantly falling in disgrace to that enemy? It's because we are not laying hold of our shield of faith. We're not taking up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We need to rejoice in the Lord and put our trust in Him. Because the Bible says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. In Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, shall he not do it? Has he spoken, shall he not make it good? And then Romans 8, 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In the Old Testament, God promised David that he would make him king. But oh, the trials and the tribulations that David had to go through in order to receive that promise. He nearly lost his life multiple times to King Saul. And he had to sleep in caves. He had to flee to other kingdoms. And in the natural, it looked like he was going to be destroyed. And it would have been so tempting to just get bitter and angry and say, well, God, you gave me this promise that I would be king, but clearly you're not going to keep your word. Clearly, I'm just going to go back to my old way of being a shepherd because you you're not going to come through for me. That's what the Israelites did in the desert, and they all died. Instead, David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he will hide me. He will set me up upon a rock. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So we are in a battle just like Jehoshaphat, just like David, and they clung to God's promises. And Jehoshaphat, <laughs> him and his people, they won abundantly. And David became king, and God made his name known throughout the generations. Even 4,000 years later, we still speak of David and the faith he had in God. So we need to think about this. And then we need to think about all the problems in our life and that how God will take care of them just like he took care of the walls of Jericho. In the natural, those walls were insurmountable. And then how did God tell Joshua how he should handle those walls? He said that I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor, and you will compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, 
Thus shall you do for six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you will compass the city seven times. And the priests will blow with the horns. And it will come to pass that when you make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet. All the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. In the natural those instructions are crazy. Everybody knows if you blow some horns and that you raise your voice in worship before God, those walls aren't going to fall down. But, but they listened. Just like God told Abraham and Sarah at 100 years old and 90 years old, you're going to have a baby boy. And remember when Jairus' daughter died and Jesus said, do not weep, she is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed him to scorn. Stop letting other people decide if God's promises make sense. Stop letting your own mind get in the way. Stop agreeing with the devil. Stop letting him rob you and say, those walls are insurmountable. That, that addiction, that problem you're facing, those politicians, they're all insurmountable and God can't do anything about it. No, he can and he will, just like he wiped out the enemy in the days of Jehoshaphat, just like he took care of Haman for Esther and he raised up Esther and Mordecai in his place, just like he took these walls of Jericho and when they obeyed him and did as he commanded, the walls of Jericho fell down. It says right here that they blew the trumpets on the seventh day and they gave a great shout and so when they blew with the trumpets, when the people heard the sound of it, that they shouted with them, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. They blew their trumpets, they shouted unto God, and the walls fell. Rejoice in the Lord. And it's because they believed in him. It takes faith to rejoice in God when things don't look like they're going to turn out. But we have to remember that we serve an awesome God. I always fail to realize how great you are. You're bigger than the stars. And with three words, let there be. You created all and more than I can see. I always forget or can't comprehend you. I'm no beginning nor an end. You are a big God. You are a great God. You're impossible to imagine. Impossible to fathom, you are a great God, a big God, more powerful than any force, much greater than the universe. You are a big God, a great God, the great I am, more constant than the planets and the stars. You are. I must confess. I doubt your word, saying inside, my problem's too big, too wide, too high, and with three words, look and see, you, you remind me of all your majesty, I look at the stars beyond what I can count, my problems are small, easy for you to surround, you are a big God, you are a great God, you're impossible to imagine, Impossible to fathom, you are a great God, a big God, more powerful than any force, much greater than the universe. You are a big God, a great God, the great I am, more constant than the planets and the stars. You are bigger than any problem I could face, more grand than anything the nations could make, bigger than all the stars and all the galaxies. You made them all in one day, and you created me. This heart of mine beats for you, these lungs they breathe, the air you made so I can sing. 
great, awesome, powerful, amazing, omnipotent, wonderful, forgiving, compassionate, incredible, Alpha and Omega, Jesus, you are. You are a big God, you are a great God, you're impossible to imagine, impossible to fathom, you are a great God, a big God, more powerful than any force, much greater than the universe, you are a big God, a great God, the great I am, more constant than the planets and the stars, I stand in wonder, amazed by who you are, a great God. God is awesome and powerful, and so often we forget that He can take care of us. Yes, we are in a war, but that enemy is already defeated. We already have won this battle, and we just need to take hold of what God says by faith and rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, give thanks in everything, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Stop crying and, and letting fear consume you. Stop letting the devil steal your your peace, steal your sleep, and steal your peace of mind. The Bible says thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Here, the Bible says, as we close, I'd like to read this passage. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength, and horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, he is our help and our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee and then we will see the walls of Jericho fall we will see the enemy forces die we will see that God's word is true as we rejoice and cling to his word by faith and not say well I'll go back to Egypt no we cannot afford to go back to Egypt our soul is in the balance and we will win this war let's close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer Father God, thank you for this word. And Lord, you know how it is applicable in our everyday life. Show us where we need to start rejoicing you and take hold of your word by faith and start being a doer of the word and take up our shields of faith and stop letting the devil have a heyday in our lives. Reveal to us, Lord, where you want to transform and change us. And then we will see step by step, just like Abraham and Sarah achieved their promise, just like David became king, just like the walls of Jericho fell, and over and over, we see their promises they attain through faith, that we will attain your promises through faith. Quicken us in your ways, Lord, and sustain us in this day and age. Be our strength and help us not to fear, but to rejoice in you. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.